Hello everybody and welcome to Game A Dayer. It is day 238 here on Game A Dayer. My name is Step and today it is a Saturday and we have decided to keep the visual novel train going. We played a free-to-play game for Free-to-Play Friday that was a visual novel and today for Spooky Saturday uh, I found this one in my collection. It has the horror and psychological horror tags, so we hope that we know what we're getting into. Lynn is a short story about the scariest thing in the world, being a teenager. I hope they're not just being facetious, but we'll find out. So this game has very positive reviews and is available on Steam for free. So if you want to check out Lynn, if we don't get through the whole thing, it says it's a short story, uh, then you can do that, but first, why don't you join us while we play it? All right, here we are. Originally in Russian, this game looks like, so uh, let's just start. Uh, what the crap? When I regain consciousness, I realize... I'm in a public bathroom, but I'm not an. it's not a normal public bathroom. The bathroom seems to extend outwards forever, infinitely, like an optical illusion. The dim light bulbs are suspended on flimsy plastic strings. They gutter in and out intermittently, unsure of themselves. <clears throat> My head feels heavy. Why does it hurt so much? I sigh and hold a hand against my temple. I can feel it pulsing beneath my fingertips. Gross. Human bodies really are gross. They're bags of flesh that contain all sorts of stuff. Bones and blood and guts and goo. With hearts that beat and lungs that shudder and bladders filled up with amber urine. Thinking about it makes me want to dig my fingernails deep into my skin and dig it all out. But I bet that would look gross, too. Maybe I should pull my eyes out first so I don't need to see all the blood as it spatters on the tiles. Well, this started dark. As if I know anything about biology, which I don't, I'm rubbish at school, blood doesn't stay red for very long. When it's exposed to the air, it oxidizes, I think, and then it starts to turn brown. Then turns black. I try to imagine what it would look like if this endless, dingy bathroom was stained with my blood. I don't feel anything in particular. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel bad. Maybe that's because I it hasn't actually happened? It's nothing more than a silly fantasy? My head is still hurting. My footsteps fall against the floor. When did I start walking? I don't know. I feel like I've been walking for years. The walls and the floor and the stalls and the sinks and the dryers and the bins and the mirrors continue and repeat over and over again in a loop. A stuck videotape. We still have some of Jazz's old videotapes from when she was a kid. It's mostly Disney stuff, Cinderella and Snow White. My parents aren't too well off, so we had to make do with our old battered VCR long after DVD players became the norm. Our VCR was like a monster. It made horrible noises whenever you put a tape in there, and it had cannibalistic tendencies. It liked to spit out tapes with film reels leaking out. When I was young, it used to scare me a little. Lots of things scare me. I turn my head, glancing this way and that. There are five sinks lined up neatly against... against with wall, complete with silvery taps and soap dispensers. Somebody stole on a roll of toilet paper and left it soaking in one of the basins. The paper flops limply over the edge of the bowl. It's a bit sad. The taps are turned off, but water still drips from their faulty heads. They're leaking. 
And yes, that hum is part of the game. I'm not sure what that's about. The lone roll of loo paper is starting to turn soft. It's collapsing in on itself like something rotten. I keep walking. I walk past the sinks. At least, I think I walk past the sinks. But when I turn my head up, I can see them. Right there in... Again, right in the corner of my eye. Five sinks, chipped and cracked, with soap dispensers and that same roll of toilet paper laying in the rightmost basin. The roll of toilet paper is still being waterboarded by the faulty tab. I walk by, trying to ignore it, but then I glance to my right once more. There it is again. Five sinks. Five basins. One roll of toilet paper, decomposing slowly. The toilet paper looks worse every time I see it. White paper begins to fl flake away from the cardboard skeleton. I've had dreams like this, not in a bathroom, but like repeating horrors. It melts away. I feel like I'm melting too. I don't know how long I've been walking. My feet are cramped inside my shoes. My toes are pushed up unpleasantly against the tips so they rub red raw. That's when I realize I'm wearing my old white he heels from Aunt Shirley's wedding. Not her last wedding, the wedding before that. I must have been nine or ten back then. I'm fifteen now, and my feet have done a fair bit of growing. No wonder these shoes hurt so much. My feet weren't made for them. Not the feet I have right now, at any rate. Why am I wearing them? It hurts. But I keep walking. I can't not keep walking. I'm afraid something bad will happen if I stop. Suddenly, alarmingly, I'm aware that I'm not alone. There's something behind me. But I don't know what that something is. I look back over my shoulder, my breath catches in my throat. Everything has been swallowed up by a, mush, must, a musty, impenetrable darkness. The darkness smells like the inside of a walk-in wardrobe that hasn't been walked into for in a very long time. I tremble. My footsteps strike against the tiles over and over. My heart beats inside my chest. It knocks against my ribcage. My feet hurt. They hurt so, so much. I think they're starting to bleed. Sores and blisters run along the backs of my feet. I can feel welts in the grooves between my toes. They're all br bursting. Give it time and my blood will turn burgundy, then dark red, then black. Aren't burgundy and dark red the same thing? Uh, burgundy is a nice color. Maroon is the color that blood turns when it dries. It's also a nice color. In, out of context. Everything in here is the same. Everything repeats over and over again. The light bulbs, the stalls, the sinks, the taps, the toilet paper, the dryers, and the tiles, and the mirrors, and... The mirrors? There's something strange about the mirrors. But no, it, it isn't the mirrors. It's the girl inside them. The white shoes slosh when I come to a halt. Everything smells. Smell of mold and urine and my own bodily fluids. But the girl who looks back in the mirror, at me in the mirror, my, her, fingers, grasping the rim of a sink so tightly her knuckles turn white, isn't me. I stare. She stares back. Questions run through my head. Where am I? How did I get here? What is this place? I was me when I first started walking, I think. But the more I walked into these two small, in these two small shoes, the less like me I became. I started to change. I just didn't realize it. Not until I saw myself in the mirrors. This girl. I reach forward, my fingers brushing the surface of the mirror. It's sticky, and it makes me feel sick. But my feet are sticky too, so it doesn't matter. The girl looks like me. She has the same hair, the same eyes, the same nose, the same ears, the same lips. But she isn't me. My muscles tense beneath her skin. Her face responds. It smiles when I smile and frowns when I frown. The 
face is mine, but I know it isn't. It can't be. I'm not her. She's not me. Lynn? When I speak, an alien voice comes from my mouth. My breath catches in my throat. And then... I feel something brush against the back of my neck. There's nothing in the mirror. But there's something behind me. I don't know what it is, and I don't know... Uh, but I know it's something cold. Even colder than the roll of toilet paper soaking in the sink to the far right. I don't know how... I don't know long it's been soaking for. I don't know how long I've been here. I don't know how long I've been her. I don't know anything really, but... I do know that this is it. The end. There'll be no more repetitions. No more walls and floor and stalls and sinks and dryers and bins and mirrors. There's just me. Me and the darkness and the bad thing that lurks behind it. Behind me. Breathing against my neck. Welcome home, Lynn, it seems to say. With invisible teeth encrusted with algae. We missed you. But that's not fair. They've got the wrong girl. I'm not her. I'm not. I'm not Lynn. Hey, Squirt. Rough night? Mm. I root through the bread bin, unearthing the last two slices of Warburton's half and half. Naturally, they're the crust. The cast-offs nobody wants. I glare at Jazz. She's sitting at the kitchen table eating her own slice of toast, not the crusts. She saved those for me. Oh, thanks a lot. No problem, honey. Why are you so selfish? Hmm, I wonder. Maybe because I'm a horrible person. Well, I know that. I slot my bread, crusts, I mean, into the toaster and sigh. I feel worked up. I've been worked up ever since I woke up. I was worked up when I was brushing my teeth. I was worked up when I was combing my hair. I was worked up when I was putting on my skirt and sliding up my socks and buttoning up my shirt. Now I'm worked up as I wait for my incredibly appetizing breakfast to finish toasting. I fish a knife from the cutlery drawer and peer inside the inner workings of the toaster. I peer a little too closely, actually, and my hair nearly gets caught inside it. I draw back, startled. Jess snorts. Well done, genius. Shut up. I stick my tongue out at her. She sticks her tongue out, too. I glance back at the toaster, but I don't lean in quite so closely this time. I tap my feet against the floor and sigh. Why is it taking so long? You going anywhere in a hurry? I have to go to school. I don't know why you're so eager. I always hated school. Yeah, but I have exams coming up. I pick up the knife and begin to prod at the tops of my slowly toasting crusts. You shouldn't do that. You'll electrocute yourself. Like you care. I do care, actually, and you'll definitely care when one million watts of electricity are coursing through your thick skull. I'll survive. That's what you think. God, why do kids think they know everything? I'm not a kid. Please. Jazz tuts and rolls her eyes. She does that a lot. It's very effective. Jazz always wears a lot of makeup, and she's good at applying it. Her eyes are particularly expressive. Jazz is, pre is pretty already. She doesn't really need makeup, but the makeup makes her even prettier. 
According to Jas, putting on her makeup is the sole thing that gets her out of bed in the mornings. I guess there's not as m not much else for her to do. She doesn't have a job, she just sits around the house all day. Sometimes I wish I could do that. I thought you were meant to be the smart one in the family, Lynn. I'm not smart. I suck. Literally. Piss off. Jas is the one who sucks, and that is literal. The bulge in her belly is proof enough. Not that you get pregnant like that. I know that much. I might be in secondary school, but I'm not thick. Not that thick, anyway. The toaster pings. My bread crusts pop up like I should be happy to see them. I'm not. Piss off. I poke the crust with the tip of my knife again. They don't reply. Jas does. Why are you talking to your breakfast, you crazy girl? I thought you said you didn't want to be late for school. I don't. Then why don't you get a move on? You'll miss your train. I know. I grab a plate and slide my crusts onto it. I smear butter on the crust an inch thick, like that'll somehow make them taste better, and a scoop of lemon curd for good measure. The lemon curd mixes with the gooey, bright yellow butter. The end result looks kind of gross, but it tastes fine. I take my plate to the kitchen table. I stumble on the way there, twisting my ankle on thin air. I curse beneath my breath. Shit. Hey, Lynn, are you sure you're okay? You seem a little out of it. A, a little, I guess. Bad dream? Yeah. Bad doesn't quite cover it. Terrible, more like. My feet still hurt. I checked them when I woke up this morning, trembling, to see whether they were still in one piece or not. I was afraid they'd be bloodied stumps, the, uh, the little bones all broken from being forced into shoes that were too small for me. They looked fine, but that was ten minutes ago. What about now? My toes curl against the insides of my shoes. Jess stares at me. Does she think I've gone totally mental? Maybe I have. You were tossing and turning like the girl from The Exorcist this morning, Lynn. You woke me up. So that explains why Jazz is up so early. She doesn't usually surface until gone noon. She doesn't have to. Not since she dropped out from sixth form college. All she does is practice her makeup in front of her vanity mirror. Our vanity mirror, actually, since we share the same bedroom. Eat cereal and watch The Jeremy Kyle Show. I stare at my crusts. My crusts stare back, slathered in butter and lemon curd. My stomach churns. I'm sorry, Jazz. It's alright. I already had my revenge. The bread? Mm-hmm. Jazz coils a strand of hair around her finger. She looks smug. So, what are you gonna do? What what are you gonna be doing today? More studying? Don't mention the S word. Now, now, you've got your GCSEs coming up in, what, three weeks? You better get cracking. I bite into my bread crust smeared with butter and lemon curd. The butter is sweet, oily, and fatty, while the lemon curd is sharp and sweet. It's thick, sticky. Feels like it's clogging up my throat. Maybe I put a little too much on. You know, Mom and Dad expect a lot from you. Don't let them down. Thanks. I feel sick. I definitely use too much lemon curd. Jazz, please. What? It's the truth. After I turned out to be such a monumental fuck-up, the least you could do is not fail all your GCSEs. You're supposed to be the smart one, remember? That's what they say, but... My voice trails off. My cheeks are smeared with toast crumbs and bits of lemon curd. They feel oily. I swallow. I don't want to talk about it. 
Well, you'll probably be fine. You'd have to try to do worse on your GCSEs than I did. Yeah, but it's different now. You could retake your exams. I can't. Mm-hmm. Sucks to be you. Jess sounds so cheerful, it's kind of makes me want to punch her. But I know I can't. Not anymore. We used to fight a lot when we were younger, with hair pulling and scratching, but... Now Jazz is pregnant, I'd feel a little guilty about slapping her. You can't hit a pregnant woman. Even if that pregnant woman is your sister, who isn't really a woman. I don't think she is, anyway. She's only 19. She's still a teenager, technically. I click my lemon curdy tongue against the roof of my mouth. I should probably get going. You probably should. Don't drop out of school before your exams start. Otherwise, what would be the point? Sometimes I think Jess derives happiness from... Uh, whoops. She's always been like that. She used to bully me relentlessly when we were little. She's always kicking me beneath the dinner table, hitting me with the TV remote, and whispering creepy stories into my ear at night when I was trying to sleep. She told me Santa wasn't real when I was four. I cried. I cried a lot. And then she went and got herself knocked up, and now she's so heavily pregnant, I can't argue back when she starts being a bitch because I feel guilty. Maybe she's smarter than her GCSE results give her credit for. I drop my plate in the sink. It's coated with crumbs and a smear of buttery lemon. What are you going to do all day, Jazz? Watch the Jeremy Kyle show, probably. Don't you ever get sick of that? Nope. I don't like that show. I think it's mean. It's the sort of show that makes fun of people like Jazz. The audience watches these poor, sad, broken people pour out their guts and argue with each other and break down into tears, and then they laugh and cheer and applaud like it's something funny. It isn't funny. It's real people's lives, and I hate it. But Jas doesn't seem to care. I know it's mean, but it's not uh, on that show. But I'm on, not on that show. Why does it matter? I run my dirty plate beneath the lukewarm water and frown. It just isn't very nice. <clears throat> Says you! Didn't you give that girl in your class a black eye a few months ago? She deserved it. She called you a slut. She might have been right. Jas prods at her belly. It's strained beneath her shirt like a large, obscene balloon. Maybe I am a slut. This is why I can't argue with Jas anymore, not even when she steals my apricot yogurts. She doesn't fight back like she used to. <clears throat> The weird tugs on the wind, excuse me. The wind tugs at the hem of my school skirt. I hold it down with one hand and use the other to support the straps of my beaten up old messenger bag. My bag's falling apart and it doesn't close properly now, but I can't afford a new one. I'll have to bear with it, just like I have to bear with Jazz hand me down uniforms, and these days scuff and these old scuffed trainers at least they're not the shoes i wore to aunt shirley's first wedding i click my tongue against the roof of my mouth why am i still thinking about that dream it must have left an impression on me that's rare i have bad dreams on an almost daily basis but the details start slipping away the moment i open my eyes it's definitely unusual for me to still remember, not just the gist, but the specific ins and outs of my dream while I wait on platform number two at Strawberry Hill Station for my train. There are a few other people waiting, glancing alternatively, alternately between their watches and the electric signboard. Rush hour in London is never pleasant. The trains are always packed. I hate going to school, especially with a bulky messenger bag to manipulate. 
Once, I hit a small child in the face with my bag when I was scrambling onto the train. He cried, and his mother started scolding me very, very loudly in front of all the, uh, those smart businessmen. What do you think you're doing, you clumsy girl? His nose is bleeding. You could have caused some serious damage. What did you, you, what do you have to say? By the end of this woman's tirade, I was almost crying too. I couldn't cry, of course, because I wasn't a little kid, and people don't think it's cute when teenagers cry. They think it's pathetic. I was 13 back then. I'm even older now. I don't feel any wiser, though. My GCSEs are coming up soon. Then, I'll be finished with school for good. I won't need to ride on this cramped train at half seven in the morning ever again, unless I decide to go to college like Jas did. I don't think I'd go to the same college as Jas, though, because she was studying health and beauty. That's a vocational subject. I think Jas is pretty good at health and beauty, especially the beauty part. She knows all about getting your nails trimmed and how to curl people's hair, but Dad wasn't very happy about it. He kept banging on, saying she was wasting her life, wasting her education. We've given you so many opportunities, and we just you just fling them back in our faces. Why can't you be more like your sister? I don't know why anyone would want to be like me. I don't want to be like me, but at the same time, I glance to the right. I half expect to see the glint of metal taps in my peripheral vision, complete with basins, but I don't. Instead I see a girl around my age, but not quite my age. I know her. We're in the same form group. We've been in the same form group ever since I started at Grey Cor Grey's Court School. She's a girl who looks a lot like me, with straightened black hair and brown eyes. But there's more to it than that. It's the arrangement of the features on her face, and the shape of them, too. Her eyes, her nose, her ears, her lips. She looks so much like me that it's a little creepy. She looks so much like me that Miss Madley, our form teacher, did a double take when she saw us in our oversized Grace Court uniforms on our first day in Year 7. She asked us, in a very exaggerated tone, if we were twins. Like being a twin is something special. We're not, of course. We're not related at all. We're probably related in some way, if you go back far enough, but the blood ties between us are so weak that it'd be about 99.9999 water. It doesn't help that she has the same name as me. A similar name, at least. My name is Lynn. She's called Lynn. She's me, but a me who reached into a Scrabble box and pulled out an extra vowel. Her name would be worth more than mine if you tried to play it on the board. Like, she's so much better than I am. And, in a way, I guess she is. Her school bag is nice and shiny. So are her shoes. Her uniforms are always ironed, and her tights never have any holes. She's like me, but better. Lynn, with an E. She'll probably do better at her GCSEs than I will, too. That's a given. Lynn is really smart. I look at her. I look at her for a little too long, as I often do, and she lifts her head. Her eyes meet mine. Her gaze hurts. I feel like a needle is digging into the back of my skull. A short, sharp pain splits through the side of my head. I wince. I know this is going to sound petty, but I really, really hate that girl. Hey, Lynn, guess what Aki brought me? I don't know. What did Aki buy you? Well... 
Susie smiles smugly, her head resting on her hand her head resting on her hand, her elbow resting on the desk. Her legs are crossed, but she keeps uncrossing and recrossing them, adjusting the hem of her skirt. Susie's kind of like that. She's one of those girls who's lucky enough to be considered kind of pretty, despite all her freckles, and she likes flaunting it. Her face is nice, I guess, but I think her thighs are the prettiest part of her body. Her thighs are slender, milky, and white, and she wears her school skirts a little too short so she can show them off, even in the winter. I'm kind of jealous. Susie's cute enough as it is, even her name is cute, though her full name is Susanna. Uh, is a little stuffy. She doesn't need to make herself cuter. Being her friend is kind of bad for my self-esteem. She's had way more boyfriends than I have. It's not fair. Not that it's hard to have more boyfriends than, I, than me. I haven't had any. That's not much of a competition, is it? Like, I could ever compete with Susie. He bought me a maid uniform! A real maid uniform! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, really? That's cool, I guess. I try to sound enthusiastic. It's hard work. I've had to listen to Susie talking to me, talking at me, more like, about her dreamy Japanese boyfriend for the last month and a half. Aki. She met him online and when she was doing a live stream. He contacted her and said he could uh, compose music, but he knew a little bit about idol culture, and if she was really serious about being a performer, then he could be her manager. Now he's dating her. Well, dating in the loosest possible way, since he lives in Japan and we live in Richmond. It is cool, right? I'm going to wear it on one of my live streams. Neat. Yeah, I picked the outfit out myself. It's kind of expensive, but I mean, Aki has money, so... Susie smiles and shrugs her shoulders coyly. Having a rich boyfriend must be nice. It must be nice having a, any boyfriend, full stop. Though, I guess Aki's more a man than a boy, and he lives so far away, he and Susie have no hopes of ever kissing and cuddling. Well, all the boys in our year group are stupid, and the boys in our form are especially brain-dead. Bradley Heard tried to give himself a tattoo with his protractor and a blue bureau pen in math. He managed to give himself a makeshift tattoo, a lopsided wonky one, but he also gave himself blood poisoning. Craig Bentley's always making lecherous comments and trying to peer up girls' skirts when they walk up the stairs. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. In fact, I hate them. Girls my age are meant to be interested in relationships, I think. That's what all the teen books and movies say. I'm not, though. Maybe there's something wrong with me. That's what Jazz says. She has a lot of boyfriends when she was my age, too. But I don't think she ever really liked them. Sometimes, I've tried to imagine it. But letting a boy like Bradley or Craig touch me with their dirty, smudgy fingers makes me feel sick. If I had a boyfriend, I think I'd rather have a boyfriend like Aki, who lives so far away I'd never have to worry about him peering up my skirt or trying to grope me. Not like anybody would want to. Aki's so generous! Susie's still stuck in La La Land. She's mooning over her boyfriend like he's the second coming of Christ. I can ask him to buy me anything, you know? Literally anything. He just jumps at the chance, like it's some huge honor. Asian guys are always so eager to please. I think it sounds weird. Oh, Lynn. Susie tuts. She looks sympathetic. You'll understand when you start dating. 
Stupid boys like Bradley and Craig are rude and mean and make gross comments, but real men know how to treat their girlfriends right. Why is that? Because they know they're lucky to have us. I mean, look at it this way. I'm a cute young girl. I'm in the prime of my youth. He, meanwhile, is in his 30s. Well, he said he's in his 20s, but I don't believe it. I've seen the photos. He's old and not really super attractive. I think he's cute, but there are way better guys out there. Why should I be interested in him? <clears throat> because you like each other? I guess, but that's not it. It isn't? Of course not. Don't be daft. It's about give and take. He wants a cute young girlfriend, and I want somebody who will spoil me and buy me nice things. Everybody wins. But what do your parents think about Aki? What they don't know doesn't have to hurt them. Aren't they suspicious about all these packages he keeps sending you? You worry too much, Lynn. Susie looks at me pityingly. She always looked at me like that, like I'm slow in the head. So what if she has a couple of boyfriends? That doesn't make her more mature than I am. I say it makes her less mature. By... But judging by the way she talks, you'd think she was far older. You should live a little! That's why you need... Uh, you've never had a boyfriend yourself. I don't think I want one. You will give it time. Like it's a foregone conclusion. Susie starts peering at her fingernails. She turns them this way and that, examining them beneath the lights of the classroom. Her fingernails are perfect, but like just like the rest of her. They're manicured, painted with nude gloss. She never, ever bites them. Who has the time to worry about their appearance that much? Susie, I guess. Susie's been doing live streams from her bedroom for a couple of years now in an attempt to become a Japanese idol. An English angel with white skin and blue eyes. It seems to be working out for her. I think she's actually pretty popular. Not that I watch her streams. It'd be kind of voyeuristic, I think. And anyway, who wants to watch their best friend since kindergarten wearing cat ears or a kimono? I guess she has a new costume in her repertoire now, courtesy of her boyfriend slash manager. Good for Susie. At least she's happy. She looks happy anyway. And isn't that basically the same thing? That is a good point. Dad and Jas are arguing again. I don't think it's Jas's fault. She probably didn't want to argue, least of all with Dad. Jas used to bully me a lot when we were little, but I don't think she's a nasty person, not really. Even if she is, she certainly wouldn't try to pick a fight with her dad. Dad's a lot bigger than both of us, and he's scary too. He'd be scary even if he wasn't such a quick temper. Dad's shoulders are broad, and his hands are very large. They're scarred from years of manual labor. He works in construction. Has n uh, has done ever since I can remember. That's kind of uh, good Dad works in construction. Usually, he's too tired and dusty to do anything other than sigh and grunt and lie on the sofa and watch TV when he comes home from work. But that's just most of the time. Not all the time. Sometimes he comes home in really foul moods. His hands cracked and muddy, his palms bleeding, and then he starts shouting. He never starts shouting right away, though. He's always quiet at first, like a volcano before it erupts. It makes it even scarier. Dad isn't a bad person. He doesn't mean to lose his temper. I don't think he wants to shout at Mum or insult Jazz or make me cry. He does it because he's stuck in an exhausting job he doesn't like, but he never went to college so he can't get anything better. According to Dad, the job market's in the shitter right now, his words, not mine, 
and there's no way he can even hope of getting anything halfway decent. That's why he keeps telling me I should study. I have to do well. I have to succeed. I mustn't run away. I, I have to make him proud. I think what he really means is, don't end up like me. That's why he got so angry at Jas when she broke the news about her pre pregnancy. Maybe he thought it was some kind of failure on his part. Or maybe he thought he'd done everything he could for us and Jas was throwing his efforts back in his face. He's argued with Jas on an almost daily basis since then. But Jas isn't meek like me, and she doesn't get scared easily, so she always argues back. Dad started to have a go at Jas as soon as he got home today, and then she tried to defend herself, and things got worse from there. Mom asked Dad to stop, but he just shoved her away. Stay out of this, Marigold. It has nothing to do with you. Mom tried to say it did have something to do with her, because Jazz is her daughter, but then Dad gave her this look and Mom hid herself away in the kitchen. Dad and Jazz are still arguing even now. I can hear them downstairs, their voices echoing through the house. So you just sat at home and did nothing again? You're wasting your life. Well, do you ex uh, what do you expect me to do? I'm six months pregnant. I don't want to risk hurting the baby. The baby, the baby, it's always the fucking baby. You should have thought about that before you gave yourself to this first man that asked. I already told you, it was a party. I was drunk. And that makes it all better, does it? I wasn't saying that, I just... I don't want to hear it. I didn't raise my only daughter to be a slut. Only daughter? I wish the walls in this house weren't so thin. I can hear them yelling even though I'm in the upstairs bathroom. I think the neighbors can hear too. We've had noise complaints more than once. The arguing got so bad at one point, Jazz moved out to live with one of her friends for three weeks. Mum cried and thought she'd never come back, but she did. Dad cried too. He hugged Jazz and called her his baby girl and said he was sorry. He was so, so sorry. He said he'd never shout at her like that again. He was wrong. I stare at the ceiling. The beige paint is peeling and mold is sprouting in the corners. The water, now lukewarm, pools around my body. The tap is faulty and it drips over and over again into the already overfull bathtub. It's not loud and, uh, enough. Not loud enough to drown out the noise. There's always so much noise. I sink back in the tub, submerging myself completely. I want to hide from it all, everything. There are rolls of fat on my tummy, and my legs need shaving. They're nicked here and there with small scars from my last attempt. I have P.E. tomorrow. It's my least favorite lesson. I can't stand it. I don't like getting changed in front of my classmates. I always worry, compared to everyone else, that my body looks all wrong. I close my eyes. The water flows around my head. It worms its way inside my ears. It's harder to hear Dad and Jazz like this. The sound is distorted, like it's happening on an alien planet millions of light years away. I think I'd prefer that. I'd like to live in space if it meant I could be alone. No dad, no mum, no Jazz, no Susie, no Lynn either. I wonder what Lynn's house is like. I bet it isn't like this. And next we have number 86. Miss Harper, will you please step onto the stage? I want to obey the disembodied voice, but I can't. My legs are trembling like a baby deer's. My heart is pounding. I can hear them all, the crowd, their cheering, 
It's so loud, it hurts. They're getting more and more excited. The previous act was ushered off the stage. The red X that marks the spot is free. Waiting. I feel sick. Why did I sign up for this? I don't think I did sign up for it. It must have been Susie. We saw an advert on TV a while back, and Susie said it was a great opportunity. You wouldn't want to miss out on a shot at stardom, would you? She asked. I would. Very much so. I don't like performing in front of other people. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not pretty like Susie. I'm not self-confident. I'm not anything, really. Why am I here? I want to turn around and leave, but I've already come this far. I can't back out now. The roar of the cloud is, crowd is almost deafening. Miss Harper, will you please step onto the stage? The disembodied voice calls to me again, crackly and distorted. It sounds impatient. The crowd are getting impatient too. So is Susie. She's standing behind me. When did she get there? And she pushes me between the shoulder plays. Her eyes are narrowed. Come on, Lynn. We've worked hard for this. You can't back out now. I, I don't know. I'm nervous. You can't be nervous. Not after we worked on your choreography. And you have such a cute outfit, too. It'd be a shame not to flaunt it. Cute? I'm not so sure. This outfit would probably look cute on Susie, but it doesn't look cute on me. My skirt is too short. It's several inches above my knees. If I move around too much, I'll be in serious danger of exposing my underwear to the entire nation. What was I thinking? I never think. The longer I stand here in the wings, paralyzed with fear, the harder it and harder it gets for me to think until I start to unthink. Everything I might have thought is slipping out of my skull, like somebody's drilled a hole in my head. Susie, please, I can't. You have to! Aki composed this song especially for you! Aki? I glance over Susie's shoulder. Aki's there, because of course he is. He would... he was always there. He came to see me, because he composed a song for me, and now I have to dance to it. He's in his thirties, but he doesn't look that old. Though, when I squint, I can see small lines behind beneath his eyes. His teeth are a little yellow, too, and there are blemishes across his skin. I can't imagine Susie dating somebody like this, but he is rich, so... You... Uh, and your mother made your costume. You can't let her down. That's right. I made it just for you, darling. Mum? Don't look so surprised, dear. I wanted to come and cheer you on. That's right. You can do it, Lynn. <clears throat> and Jazz? Jazz is here, too? Why wouldn't Jazz be here? If Aki's here who I'm sure I've never met before. It makes sense Jas would be here, too. I'm not sure about Dad, but maybe he was so ashamed at the thought of his favorite daughter making a fool out of herself on national television that he couldn't bear to show up. I don't think I blame him. Miss Harper, if you are there, will you please come onto the stage? The audiences are stamping their feet against the floor. I can hear them. They stamp over and over again. It echoes inside my skull. <clears throat> my heart pounds harder and harder. You can do it, Lynn! Don't back down! You're meant to be the smart one! I've always wanted at least one of my children to amount to something. Hey, what about me, Mum? But, but, but I... You worry too much, Lynn. You need to live a little. That's why you've never had a boyfriend. I feel like I'm going to be sick, but maybe Susie's right. I do need to live a little. I can't give up before I've tried. I breathe in deeply and square my shoulders. My stomach's churning, and I think I'm going to be sick, but I try to suppress it. 
The show must go on. The show will go on, whether I want it to or not. The lights on the stage are far too bright. The roar of the crowd is deafening. I feel like I've been tossed off the side of a ship. I'm drowning in lights, sounds, and sensations. There are so many colors I can see the white lights flickering inside my eyelids when I blink. This stage is the only thing that separates me from the crowd. If they wanted, they would swarm forward and pull me down at any time. Hurt me. Trample me. Break me. I shiver. Susie and Aki and Jas and my mother are waiting for me in the wings, just beyond the plush red curtains, but I've never felt so alone. My fingers tremble. My makeup is starting to run. I'm sweating foundation and eyeshadow and mascara like some sort of clown. A circus freak. The crowd goes wild. So, Miss Harper, will you please introduce yourself? What brings you to Searching for the Stars? Um, I need to lift my head. Stop looking at my feet. I doubt I'm making a good impression. My grip around m microphone spasms. When did I have a microphone? Oh well, it doesn't matter. Um, I... I'm Lynn Harper, and I'm 15 years old. I, I go to Grey Court Secondary School, and I'm not that good at anything. The audience laughs appreciatively. But my friend Susie made me sign up for this, and she put together a routine for me, so I'm going to sing and dance. All right, do your best. Y yes, thank you. The music begins to play, and the song Aki composed for me, but there's something wrong with it. It's muffled and distorted like it's playing from the bottom of the ocean. Thousands of beady, unblinking eyes are trained on me. They all want to see me fail. Maybe this is what I deserve. I watch Britain's Got Talent and The X Factor in the living room with Jazz sometimes, whenever they're on and we always snigger obligingly at the crab acts. The old woman with false teeth who can't sing? The stunned artists who trip and fall all over their own feet? The comedians who can't get a single smile, let alone a laugh? It's just a public exercise in meanness, really. It's the way to mock and belittle someone who dares to think they can have talent. But I don't think that. I know I don't have any talent. I'm just Lynn. Plain Lynn. I don't have an extra E at the end of my name. And speaking of which... Ah... Uh, There's a girl in the audience. I recognize her. She's sitting between two dark and shadowy figures, without eyes, or noses, or ears, or mouths. In contrast, the girl's features are very sharp. Her eyes are awfully familiar. So is her nose, her mouth, her ears, her hair. She looks just like me, but she isn't me. She can't be me because I'm up here and she's down there. Lynn? But the music continues. I stand there feeling stupider and stupider with every passing second. I sweat makeup. Animal fat rolls off my skin in gobbets. The audience are getting restless. They start calling out to me. I can't hear what they're saying. I'm glad, too. But I get the general gist. They stamp their shadowy feet. They point with their shadowy fingers. They shout with their shadowy mouths. Get her off the stage! She's not doing anything! What a waste. A waste. I really am a waste. I feel faint. I 
think I'm going to collapse until a strange, scuttling sensation begins to creep. No, not just creep, caress my body. The touch is almost intimate, but in such an incredibly wrong way, it makes the hairs stand up on the back of my neck. What's happening? There are feelers all over my body, or maybe they're not feelers. Could they instead be legs? Yes, legs, that's what they are. Hundreds upon hundreds of tiny insectile legs. They trail down the small of my back. They probe the dark crevices of my belly button. They squirm against the inside of my thighs. They're everywhere, all of them. Horrible, horrible monsters. My body is crawling with dozens upon dozens of millipedes. Where did they come from? I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever find out. The audience are laughing. The sound threatens to burst my eardrums. I have very narrow ear canals. Mum said it was a medical condition. It runs in the family. I can't deal with all this. These disgusting, filthy, horrible creatures. I try to bat them away, brush them off. A few millipedes fall from my thighs. They land upside down on the wooden stage, their legs squirming pathetically in the air. Hundreds on hundreds of legs. I step on them, they burst, leaking black insect fluid all over the wooden stage. The audience laughs harder. They're pouring their pounding their feet against the floor. The stage seems to shake. Why are they enjoying this so much? What did I do wrong? No matter how many millipedes I shake off my body, yet more spawn to replace them. They're endless. They continue to wriggle and writhe, covering every inch of my body. Between my toes, against my armpits, even inside my mouth. I choke, gag, thousands of tiny legs, even thinner than pipe cleaners. Try to prize my lips open. I can feel them wriggling against my tongue. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to vomit millipedes all over the stage. Everybody's going to see. They're going to laugh. Everybody. Except her. She won't laugh. She'll just watch and stare. And she won't do anything to help me. Why should she? I've never tried to be nice to her. Why would she be nice to me? Uh, I can't keep upright. I fall to my knees, squashing several rigging, wriggling millipedes beneath me. There are more and more of them. They're not just crawling against my skin, over my brow, inside my bra. Instead, they're inside me, inside my mouth, beneath my eyes, secreted away inside my veins. I'm choking. I'm drowning. I'm dying. And everybody laughs. Okay. That was icky and creepy. And that's it for us for today. Blah. So apparently this was a spooky, scary, creepy Saturday, and it was fine. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it some love. Also, let me know what you think. Give me comments. I'm super eager about getting comments about this kind of thing, because not only do I have to try to voice female, which is something that I kind of work at, um, I also have to be emotive and evocative, and this kind of story, well, it appeals to me, it doesn't appeal to everyone, um, so please do leave me comments, let me know what you think. Also. We got maybe halfway through, I assume. She was at 50% stress. Uh, so if you want to see the rest of this game, please remember that the first video on this channel to get 100 likes will get that game a full 
playthrough as a bonus video for the channel. So if you want that game to be Lin, then uh, please give this video some love and have your family, friends, pets, uh, keep this one away from your pets, and loved ones, do the same. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, and when you do, make sure you hit that dingy bell, because that will let you know when I upload new videos, which I do every single day. My name is Step. We have been playing Lin today on this spooky Saturday. Um, thanks for watching, and come back tomorrow when we'll be playing something for Sunday story time.